the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, my friends. Happy Sunday to you. We joyfully gather around the Lord's table, praising God for the blessings of this day, and we are honored to welcome uh, a special guest today, Father Frank Rulo, a diocesan priest from Connecticut, but he uh, has been serving as a missionary priest in Haiti, and so he will here be here to share his ministries uh, and invite us to participate uh, in the works uh, for the poor. And so welcome, Father Frank. So this day, we ask the Lord to help us with the grace to be uh, uh, of a humble service to, to uh, all God's people, especially those who are most in need among us as we follow Jesus Christ. Let us pause, acknowledge our sins, and pray for God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to heal the contrite of hearts. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life for us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to gather all nations into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet 
Isaiah. The Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
came to serve and to give his life as ransom for many. Alleluia. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit, one at your right and one at your left. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink? Or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give but is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority felt over them. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As Father mentioned, my name is Father Frank Rulo, a priest of the Diocese of Norwich, Connecticut, assigned to our diocesan mission in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. And I'm here this weekend through the Bishop's Mission Cooperative Program, in which the bishops of the United States invite missionaries to come into their diocese yearly to speak about the missionary dimension of the church and to ask for your assistance. But before I do that, I want to spend a few moments reflecting on our sacred scripture readings today. Our first reading is probably familiar to you as the Good Friday reading about the suffering servant of God. From its earliest times, the Catholic Church has applied this image to Jesus. Isaiah's prophecy of a servant who would redeem Israel through suffering is unique among the prophetic books. We heard the last portion of this prophecy this morning, in which Isaiah announced that God will restore the life of the servant who has been persecuted even to death. This servant figure is for Isaiah the ideal prophet. He's faithful to God's word in his life, even when rejected and betrayed, and sees himself as suffering this rejection for the proclamation of God's mercy to others and trust in God to be with him in order to complete his mission. Jesus himself lived out this prophetic lifestyle of the servant completely in his own ministry. He identified this role of the servant with the dignity of the Messiah something radically new in Israel's thinking about Messiahship. This new vision became the source of our Christian interpretation of the meaning of Jesus' uh, passion, death, and resurrection. Psalm 33, our responsorial psalm today, applies God's word of salvation and healing to all faithful Israelites. It emphasizes 
two aspects of faithful obedience to God. First, that we can have no power or strength except to trust in God. And second, that God's word can be relied on to deliver us out of the hands of our enemies, even to preserve us from the power of death itself. The Christian community reads this psalm in light of our faith in the, of, in the prophetic and messianic mission of our Lord to see a more complete prophetic fulfillment in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. We need to hold on to our confession, our confession of faith, St. Paul writes in the letter to the Hebrews this morning. We must look upon the trials and sufferings of our lives as portions of the cup Jesus promised to those who believe in him. And we must remember that we have been baptized into his passion and death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the power of God the Father, we too might share in the resurrection, St. Paul tells us in the letter to the Romans. The sons of Zebedee hardly knew what they were asking in today's gospel from St. Mark. They're thinking in terms of how the Gentiles rule, of royal privileges and honors. But the road to Christ's kingdom is by way of his cross. To share in his glory, we must be willing to drink the cup that he drinks. The cup is an Old Testament image for God's judgment. The wicked would be made to drink this cup in punishment for their sins. Isaiah, Jeremiah, and also the Psalms tell us. But Jesus has come to drink this cup on behalf of all humanity. He's come, he has come to be baptized, which means to be plunged or emerged into the sufferings we deserve for our sins. And like Isaiah's suffering servant, the Son of Man will give his life as offering for sin, as once Israel's priests offered sacrifice for the sins of the people. Jesus is the heavenly high priest of all humanity, as we heard in our second reading. Israel's high priests offered the blood of goats and calves in the temple sanctuary. In the law of Moses, blood is the, quote, the life of the flesh, unquote. And the blood of sacrifices is which makes atonement for sins. The book of Exodus tells us that the covenant of God was sealed in blood to seal the kinship bond between God and Israel. And by bearing our guilt and offering his life to do the will of God, Jesus ransomed the many, paying the price to redeem humanity from spiritual slavery to sin and death. Jesus entered into the heavenly sanctuary with his own blood, as St. Paul writes in the letter to the Hebrews. His blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, has made atonement for all of our sins and communicates his, life, his saving life to us through the holy sacrifice of the Mass. In confidence, my brothers and sisters, let us today approach the altar, the altar of God's grace, and receive the body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, giving thanks to our Lord for all that he has done to free us from slavery to sin, for all the blessings that we have received in our lives, and for all the graces we need to live as his faithful disciples. Almost 40 years ago, a group of people from the Diocese of Norwich approached our bishop and asked him what we could do as a diocese to help the people of Haiti. As a result, the bishop and a delegation of those folks went to Haiti uh, to find out what we can do. And we've had a presence ever since in the Port-au-Prince Archdiocese. Port-au-Prince, which is the capital of Haiti, is about 600 miles 
south of Key West, Florida, or about an hour and a half flying time from Miami, but a world of difference between them. Many people may remember just last month, catastrophic earthquake that struck the southern peninsula of Haiti which was followed up two days later by a hurricane which dumped between six and 16 inches of rain on that same area. And 11 years ago, there was in the Port-au-Prince area, there was another devastating earthquake, 7.2 on the Richter scale, which, in which about 300,000 people lost their lives on one afternoon. Like Job, in the Old Testament, Haiti's faithful have been tested in many, many ways, but have held on to their faith. Long the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, this nation has been bedeviled for years by natural disasters, poverty, hunger, malnutrition, political instability, increasing gang violence, and most recently the COVID-19 pandemic. Haiti had been relatively free of this virus uh, up until a few months ago when the Brazilian uh, variant, which has been rampant throughout South America, came to Haiti. In the archdiocese, we've lost the auxiliary bishop, four priests, and several religious sisters uh, to, the, uh, to the virus. Only about a month ago did the first vaccine start to come into the country. The faith is strong in Haiti. If I could put you this morning on my magic carpet and fly you down to Port-au-Prince for mass, we'd have to get there early if you wanted a seat. Otherwise, and getting there early, I mean 10 or 15 minutes early. Otherwise, it's standing room only. The faith is strong. 60% of the people are Catholic in the country, but the resources, not so much. The church is as poor as her people. Poor materially, rich spiritually. The seminary is full. The archdiocese ordains between eight and 12 new priests each year. And as the number of priests increases, the number of parishes increases. Chapels uh, become parishes in their own right. Religious vocations are also plentiful in the country. The Haitian Constitution says that everyone's entitled to an education, but the government doesn't have the resources to provide it. That means that most education is private. You have to pay tuition, you have to pay for your own textbooks, and you have to pay for uniforms. 61% of the people, according to the World Bank, live on less than $2.10 American a day. With that kind of income, you cannot afford to send your children to school. So the cycle of poverty repeats itself generation after generation after generation. Our philosophy is to help Haitians to help Haitians. Not to do things for people, but to help them get the means so that they can do for themselves. We operate a medical clinic in the Christ the King neighborhood of Port-au-Prince that's focused on maternal and child health and well-being. That includes a, a nutrition program to bring the malnourished children of the area back up to the normal weight limits for their ages. We have several programs, among them a scholarship program in that same area for children who intellectually have the means to succeed in school but do not have the financial resources to go to school. And last year we had 200 students in that program and we keep them in the program as long as they pass their grades uh, through grammar school, high school, to professional trade school or uh, to university. And we're also involved with parish twinning. We have 15 American parishes in Connecticut, Wisconsin, 
and the state of Washington that partner with poor, rural, mostly mountainous parishes in the Port-au-Prince Archdiocese. A couple of them support medical clinics. Uh, the others all support parochial schools. Uh, they pay the salaries for the teachers in those schools. Otherwise, those schools couldn't exist. Last year, we had 3,500 students in those schools. So these ch young people are learning to read, to write, to develop critical thinking skills so that they can break out of that cycle of poverty. Our Holy Father has reminded us that the church, which is missionary by her very nature, carries out the service of charity to all as a fundamental prerogative. He stated that the missionary role is that of living signs of God's love and compassion to the world. My sisters and brothers, we have so many blessings in this country, so many things we take for granted that people in a developing world would only long for. For example, regular electricity, clean running water, hot water, educational, uh, excellent education system, excellent transportation system. Where I live, those things are lacking. Electricity, sometimes we have it, sometimes we don't. Sometimes it comes and stays for five minutes and is gone. Sometimes it stays for a couple of hours. And sometimes it stays all day. But you don't know when it's coming and you don't know when it's leaving. And in the mountainous area, there's no electricity. People have to go to community wells in those areas to pump water twice a day in five-gallon buckets to bring home for their family needs. Again, we are so blessed in this country materially. We are, my sisters and brothers, the body of Christ in the world today. The love of God is expressed to his people through us. There are so many needs, and we can only meet them through the help of people such as yourselves. As St. Teresa of Avila put it in the 16th century, Christ has no body now on earth but yours, no hands but yours, no feet but yours. Yours are the eyes to look out Christ's compassion to the world today. Yours are the feet with which he goes about doing good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses people now. My sisters and brothers, I would ask two things of you. First, for your continuing prayers for the missionary activities of the church throughout the world to bring the good news of God's love to all of humanity, to, as St. Paul says, to build up the body of Christ here on earth. And secondly, I would ask for your financial assistance in our second collection, as St. Gregory Nazarian once wrote, give something, however small, to the one who is in need, for it is not small to the one who has nothing. Neither is it small to God, to, to God if we've given what we could. So on behalf of our Haitian brothers and sisters, I want to thank you in advance for your generosity. And may God reward you abundantly for sharing his blessings to you with those much, much less fortunate than us. Amen. Thank you, Father Frank, for uh, witnessing God's love for people in Haiti. This morning, I, my friends, uh, this morning I read a, a news update about Haiti, and uh, we learned that uh, through the Miami Herald that 16 American missionaries uh, were just kidnapped on their way home from a visit to an orphanage in the uh, outskirts of uh, Port-au-Prince. And uh, in April, five priests and two nuns and three lay people were kidnapped 
All of these are for ransoms, uh, and they were all kidnapped in April. Uh, in uh, July, from July to September, more than 200 abductions uh, took place in the country. And so, uh, uh, and then July 7th, uh, the president himself was assassinated in the country. And so there's a lot of social turmoil uh, and complexity in the ministry of uh, Father Frank and uh, his organization. So but I truly uh, ask for your contribution and support uh, and prayers uh, for Father Frank's safety and all the good works uh, that you continue to do with uh, great uh, spiritual courage. So big round of applause for uh, Father Frank and all the good work that you do. Please stand as we renew our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and way, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified and upon his pile, suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and he seated the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son, who is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead life of the world to come. Amen. My dear friends, trusting in the divine providence each day, let us now offer our needs and intentions to the Heavenly Father. For church leaders, may, they vo may the voice of the Holy Spirit be their guide as they lead the faithful toward a culture of life and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all civic leaders, May God grant them a humble heart to selflessly serve all people, especially the poor and marginalized in our society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our confirmation candidates, may the Holy Spirit accompany them on their faith journey and instill in them the call to true Christian discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the candidates' families, catechists, and TAs, may they be blessed with the gifts of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as they teach their students by words and examples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and all who suffer from the pandemic, May the Holy Spirit restore them to the fullness of life and health. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of our faith community here at Seas, may the Lord increase our love for a commitment to the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially Virginia Sullivan, and Dale McKinnon. May they come to share in the fullness of Christ's glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intention of Lila Velasquez and those parishioners here today, those watching from home, and those mentioned in our prayer line, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, our salvation comes from you alone. Hear the prayers we offer today and give us the grace to devote ourselves to love and service through your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
My friends, our second collection is the support for uh, Father Frank's ministry, and that will take place after communion. And so if you sign a check, please uh, sign for two uh, C's and uh, put a memo uh, Haiti uh, on uh, your check. Thank you so much. friends and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gift, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your, your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 
By sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our bishop, and with all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the, reservation, of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. now place our complete trust in the love of God for us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your holy will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace to the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share a sign of peace. Behold Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Drink this cup, 
Come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup. Trust in me and you will not thirst. Eat my flesh and drink my blood and I will raise you up on the last day. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in me and you
our second collection at the moment to support people in Haiti. Thank you. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepare for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for some announcements for the good of our community. Sharing the Harvest by St. Vincent de Paul is still going on until October 30th. Thank you for your generosity. This Monday, October 18th, is the Feast of St. Luke the Evangelist. Friar Paul will offer a so-called White Mass or the Mass for all healthcare professionals. So if you or your family are in the healthcare professions, Please come to the 8.30 a.m. Mass for the entire community to pray for God's blessings for you. Thank you for your career and ministry and caring for the sick and dying, as well as keeping people safe and healthy always. Friday, October 22nd, the Red Cross Blood Drive, sponsored by the Knights of Columbus, will be in the parish hall from 1 to 7 p.m. Thank you for sharing your life with those who really need it. Movie Night, Wednesday, October 27th, will be sponsored by the Youth Ministry and open to all high schoolers. Mark your calendar and join us to watch the universally acclaimed TV show, The Chosen. Doors open at 6 p.m. Showing begins at 6.30 p.m. For the Sports Fest announcement, please invite a representative from the Young Adult Ministry to have a few words about the upcoming Sports Fest. Uh, next Saturday. Thank you and have a blessed weekend. Yeah, some of our youth ministers, please go ahead. Thank you, Father. Good morning and happy Sunday. My name is Genesis, and this is John, and we are part of the young adult ministry here at SEAS. And as many of you know, SEAS is going to start the celebration of the 50th Jubilee. Um, and we have a very special invitation for all of you. So this Saturday, October 23rd, from 9 to 1, uh, we'll be having our sports fest, as you can see on the screen. Um, we'll be having food, food and concessions um, outside the, in the courtyard area of Pado Hall, and then um, we'll section off a part of the parking lot um, for uh, games and activities like sports and um, minute to win the games and things like that. Um, so uh, we'll be outside um, and invite you guys to come talk to us um, and also sign up for uh, the games. Uh, there'll also be, uh, I think, jousting and um, soccer darts and also a dunk tank. So um, please sign up <laughs> or else it'll just be us young adults 
being in the dunk tank. So um, <laughs> we hope to see you out there, um, and God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Youth Ministry, for your wonderful efforts. And I am fully aware that I will be challenged in the ping pong tournament. So I also want to invite, call out the, to all of you who want to play ping pong and participate in the tour tournament. We have a, a former champion uh, of the city here. That is a three-time champion, actually. And that is uh, Deacon Steve. So he will be in the tournament also. So uh, come join us in many different uh, sports and games uh, this upcoming Saturday uh, to build community and to share the joy. Thank you so much, our uh, children choir and all the ministers of the Mass. We have a lot going on starting this upcoming week uh, for, to celebrate the joyful Golden Jubilee. And uh, we acknowledge Father Frank, uh, and I uh, have to take a bow for respect for you, you and all the good works that you do at, uh, in Haiti. And so uh, best wishes and God's blessings to you. Please stand. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to proclaim the kingdom of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God. Father, Son.